a group of high life workers who will be residing at the Norwood Inn in North Mankato. Um, as essential workers in phase 1B tier 2 and also those living in a congregate um, setting, we are hoping to vaccinate as many who are interested as soon as possible. We will vaccinate a larger number upon this initial opening of the residence, and then we hope to develop a system between ourselves and Des Moines Valley for vaccinating the workforce as they continue to rotate. On a more general note, we are told that clinics will likely open up to the full population at the beginning of May. So we expect that we will see a slowdown a little bit in April as we'll have met the majority of our um, targeted populations, and then an increase again in May when things are able to open up to the general population. Um, in this month's update, I did add just a little bit related to health and human services. Uh, we have continued to evaluate the needs for our lobbies to be open based on customer service gaps and safety for our customers and our staff members. Uh, based on recent discussions, we do plan to open both of our lobbies in North Mankato and St. Peter on March 29th. Um, we do appear to be meeting the needs of the majority through all of the remote waivers that we have in place and that remote accessibility. However, we do have concern that those who might be still attempting to come to our lobbies are likely those in need of service the most. So we'll, we will be opening the lobbies and then um, looking at our staff ratio based on the needs that we have uh, for those coming to the buildings. Um, we'll continue to allow remote work whenever possible um, based on those needs. That is all that I have for my update this month, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Commissioner Kolars. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Cassie, for the report. When you talk about uh, the 700 people this week and the vaccines, can you give us a sense of those who qualify, who work at Nicollet County, in the various departments, what numbers of our people are getting the vaccine when they as they qualify? If you could uh, outline uh, what departments are are taking the vaccine. So right now, the clinic this week will be able to serve uh, all essential workers through uh, phase one B and one C, and that is an incredible amount of people. It is child care, school staff, food processing, first responders, judicial workers, um, public transit, public health, um, child welfare, energy, finance, IT, uh, it runs a very long list of people, um, really quite a large number in our communities and in our county employees. Um, the, many of our county employees had been on a wait list for extra vaccine at the end of clinics. Uh, so for those who have reached out and expressed interest in our surveys, uh, we have been able to provide vaccine for the majority of county employees simply due to that wait list at the very end of a clinic um, to avoid waste. Um, same with many of our community partners who have other essential employees as well. Uh, so if we do have remaining county employees, uh, we've been asking them to contact us directly again so that we can have them register for these essential employee clinics. I just would like to ask, are there any of our county employees who are reticent to taking the vaccine? And if so, and, why? And it, well, and, you know, I know that Director Sassenberg understands the limits to which we can have some of that discussion, but Director Sassenberg. Yes, yeah, so we have not been tracking a specific percentage um, of employees who are interested. We have done those surveys and had them sent out, and we have had a large number of employees uh, request to be vaccinated. Okay. Commissioner Kemp, did you have a question? I just had a, a brief question of Cassie. Has your access to the supply of vaccine for the most part been meeting your needs? I know the numbers have been kind of sliding around based on availability. And um, I'm just curious, are we, are we meeting our targets as best we can? <laughs> Yes, I, I believe that we are. Uh, we did have a smaller allocation for several weeks in a row. However, this week uh, we have, I believe, the largest allocation in the region with the 700 doses being allocated. 
Um, our hope was that by taking on some additional groups like High Life and many of our large manufacturing facilities that we would be able to host a large clinic. Um, our goal had been for roughly 1200 getting one of the Pfizer um, pizza boxes as they call them, mm -hmm. however that was unavailable so uh, the 700 came a lot closer to that though than we had expected. And is this Moderna or what are you getting? Yes, this is Moderna. We are requesting uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for some of our other populations who we might not always be able to see twice, but we have not been successful in having that allocated to us yet. Thank you. Commissioner Lipke. Mr. Chair, thank you. Cassie, have, has there been any results of people who had the vaccine and say more than a couple of weeks later actually got the disease? I know that they have said there have been some breakthrough cases, um, which is what they're calling testing positive after the vaccine. Um, but again, that would be a, a very small percentage look, looking at roughly that 5% who the vaccine might not be effective for. Um, I've seen like, like health alerts come out to be monitoring for that so that people can track if those symptoms are less severe or if they lead to other consequences. Um, but I am not aware of any in our county that have been brought to our attention of anybody who has tested positive after receiving the vaccine. And the thought is on that 5%, they would maybe even get it mild, more mild than they would have without the vaccine? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Additional, uh, Commissioner Kolars. Thank you, Terry. Um, Cassie, could you zero in a little bit more on the steady pace infections in the schools? Sure. But so the number of our cases hasn't gone up significantly since school went back to in-person. Uh, we are continuing to see a steady amount of cases, though, simply due to the increased interaction um, at schools, um, school related transportation, like lengthy time spent on buses um, or sporting activities. Uh, so really the increase that we're seeing are the number of people exposed just because of those safety precautions that people are taking. Um, if somebody does test positive, for instance, on a bus and we're unable to know a seating arrangement or how long people were on a bus together, then the entire bus would be quarantined for two weeks as opposed to a handful of people. Um, so higher amount of exposures, but related to an increased focus on that safety. Thank you. Additional comments or questions? Well, Director Sassenberg, I feel like I'm almost a broken record in thanking you and your department because you all are doing a fantastic job. And I'll return to that point in a, a few minutes. Uh, I have no questions at this time. And, Thank you for your time today. Is there anything uh, that you wish to add before we move on? No, nope, I think that completes my update. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, we're, we're turning to the reports section. Before we have uh, reports by commissioners, I'd like to turn to uh, department heads who are on this call to invite you if you have information to report or uh, things you wanna make sure to share with the board. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in the order of folks I see uh, Ms. Landcammer, I believe you're first, and Ms. McCormick, you'll be second. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I do not have anything additional after last week's board workshop, our individual department head update, um, kind of brought everything forward that I had to share with you, so I do not have anything to share at this time. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Ms. McCormick, and then we'll go to uh, Sheriff Lang. Good morning um, from finance. Um, just more of a FYI, we're getting more and more information on the American Rescue Plan as days come. So uh, we have Baker Tilly's providing us a lot of information. We have a couple of meetings this week as well to learn more about it. Um, so as information comes available, I will share with the board. And that's and it for me. Any questions? I should have asked any questions for Ms. Landcammer as well. Commissioners, any questions for Ms. Landcammer or Ms. McCormick? Seeing none, uh, Sheriff Lang, and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Greenwood after Sheriff Lang. Uh, I have nothing other than uh, with the weather turning nice, traffic uh, speeds are increasing, and uh, deputies are getting busier out on the road dealing with uh, those types of complaints, but nothing new. Thank you, Sheriff Lang, and thank you to your deputies and staff as well. Uh, 
Ms. Uh, Mr. Greenwood and then uh, Ms. Copet after that. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, fairly quiet at Public Works right at the moment. Um, we are getting ready to start advertising for our Carney Road 13 concrete overlay project. Uh, that project will extend from Trunk Highway 99 South for about 5.3 miles to 506th Street. And so we're gonna start advertising tomorrow for that project, open bids in mid-April. Um, I've had conversations with Mathewitz Construction on uh, starting up work again on our, our layover projects on County Road 12 and County Road 14. Um, for the County Road 14 project, we're tentatively talking about starting construction around April uh, 19th on that project, but of course it's all weather dependent and of course April can sometimes get very wet and if that happens, of course that uh, resumption of work would would be delayed, but right now we're shooting for April 19th if we we get good weather. Um, on County kind of Road 12, uh, the surcharge continues to settle. Um, it's settling at a at a rate that we can't make any real predictions at this time when the surcharge can come off and the project can be finished. But as weather conditions improve here. Um, probably within the next week or two, we are going to be looking at um, opening the surcharge to one lane of, of traffic for uh, the local residents that live right on that section of County Road 12. So that's my update for today, unless board members have additional questions. Questions for Mr. Greenwood. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Copet and then to Mr. Molitor. Morning. <clears throat> um, I would just like to give an update that um, property tax statements did get mailed out and they should be landing in taxpayers' mailboxes as of yesterday or today. Um, Beacon is updated as well. So um, anybody that wants to get access to their tax statement should be out there too. Uh, we've already had people coming in to pay their taxes already. So that's a good thing. Um, and our lighting center continues now that we're all fully open. We have been very busy. We seem to be um, drawing in from area, local areas around us as well. So um, our lighting center is a popular place to be. And that's all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Molitor, then Mr. Moore. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would just like to update the board and everyone else that uh, Nicola County Probation continues to move forward with our transition to a Community Correct Act, Act, Act County. Uh, and that I'm looking forward to my individual department meeting on April 20th with the board to update uh, where we're at at that point and have discussion ideas how we move forward for our July 1st goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Molitor. Any questions for Mr. Molitor? We'll turn to Mr. Moore, then we'll, then our assistant county attorney. Chair Kemp, Dale is working on some technology issues. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> from <laughs> Commissioner Kemp, I'll say thank you. Uh, we'll turn to our assistant county attorney. Thank you for joining us here this morning. I, uh, I don't know if you have anything to report or to let us know about. Thank you, I have nothing to report. Wonderful, thank you. And again, thank you for joining us this morning. Is there anybody on this call that I missed uh, who has something to report to the any department heads? I don't think so. Seeing none, um, I'm gonna turn to the chair's report. And I've been giving this a little bit of thought because uh, uh, Ms. Sassenberg's uh, information reminds me that we're just about at the one year point in terms of when the pandemic started to really affect county operations. And one of the uh, changes that we've seen here uh, may seem like a small one, but I think it reflects a lot is the setting up of the uh, vestibule or atrium uh, desks as you walk in the building. And I know every time I walk in the building, uh, I'm greeted really nicely and I noticed that 
as folks come in to renew tabs or to maybe renew a driver's license, take other care of other business, uh, they're always asked in a very pleasant way, how may I help you? And I think that really is a uh, remarkable uh, phrase for the last year in Nicollet County with the pandemic. I think that uh, Nicollet County staff have been doing a tremendous job in helping our constituents. And I wanna point out before I go on, uh, my four colleagues on the board, I think Marie, Jack, Denny, and John have really stepped up to ensure that we provide the support to our staff as our staff work with our community. Uh, I really think the last year of all the challenges that uh, a county can face during a pandemic, uh, that uh, we Nicollet County has been well served by our staff and by my four colleagues on the board. Uh, certainly there are uh, ongoing challenges and Ms. Sassenberg, you've detailed them this morning and uh, your, you and your staff are certainly on the front line when it comes to answering the question, how may we help you? And 700 people are going to be helped uh, just in one clinic alone. And that's uh, really a, a remarkable thing. Uh, but the way we help people in a county is beyond uh, public health. Certainly public health has been first and foremost in everyone's minds. But as I look at this call, uh, we have uh, staff dedicated to the public safety of our community and our county. We have staff uh, directed toward making sure we stay on a fiscally conservative, responsible path. We have staff that help with property. We have staff that help, as I mentioned, with uh, motor vehicle tabs and licenses and other types of licenses. We have staff that uh, really help with the backbone of what a county does. Uh, and, and uh, in terms of IT and outreach, we have staff that uh, ha saw through an election during a pandemic. Uh, we have staff that make sure that our roads and bridges uh, remain safe and that we plan for the future. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing staff. I'm going through my head quickly here, uh, but all of us, I think, have consistently said to our residents in Nicola County, how may we help you? So I'm gonna end this my report with saying to Nicola County staff on behalf of the commissioners, we too ask the question, how may we help you? How we, may we help you as employees of what I think is the best county in the state? How may we help you do your job and serve the, the residents of our community? We mean that every day and please let us know how we can support you. That's in my report. Uh, I'll turn it to uh, Commissioner Drano. Um, department head and board workshop, and I believe that was it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kolars. Harry, thank you for the remarks. Um, grateful that you put those into words, and we all feel that way. Uh, CHS personnel, Area Transportation Planning, Minnesota Valley Action Council, our workshop, our special board, TDS, Rita, and today's board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lipke. Yes, uh, went to the Cortland and Bernadotte Township meetings on, uh, well, it would have been the same day as our last board meeting, excuse me. Uh, went through an extension hiring. Uh, well, we narrowed it down to six applicants for further, uh, further interviews. Went to the workshop, <clears throat> the special meeting, and the uh, yesterday with us, the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Is Cassie still on? Yes. Cassie, a question. Um, just to put this 700 into perspective, how many people were vaccinated at that pilot uh, vaccination in North Mankato, where I was? I'm trying to think back. I believe it was um, 1,000 each of the two weeks. So 500 a day. Yes, 500 to 600, depending on the flow. Okay, <clears throat> so you're you're going to have a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lipke. Commissioner Kemp. 
Uh, as far as housekeeping is concerned, since our last board meeting, I participated in the statewide emergency communication board's finance committee, AMC executive committee meeting for public safety, uh, workforce joint powers, our department head meeting, our special board workshop, and um, our um, county board workshop. Again, I thank you, Terry, for your many, many kind words. I'm unable to generate more kind words because everything our staff has been doing has been top shelf. I'm so incredibly proud of all the work they've done and um, can never generate enough thank yous to the staff. And in a lot of respects, I think we also need to thank our citizens because they've been supportive. They've been uh, willing to make changes and adjust their expectations of us at times also. And I, I think that's very important because we all are working as a team. Um, and I'm very, very proud of that. Um, it's, um, it's something that's incredibly important, but I also appreciate the fact that the communications that is coming from our offices and as many ways as we can come up with to communicate with our citizens uh, appears to be effective and appears to be working. And so, um, again, thank you all that make all of that happen all the time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Commissioner Kip. And that's an opportunity to remind me that, you know, there's, there are so many people who contribute to this effort, uh, keeping in even here in this building, keeping this building running right. enables us to keep and the, all the changes we had to make that it's tr truly been a team effort. Uh, folks, I'm not aware of any commissioner meetings or conferences, but I'll open it up in case I'm missing something. Seeing none, I'll take a, I'll invite a motion to approve per diems and expenses. Kemp would make the motion. Second. Kemp moves, Kolar seconds. Uh, Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Kolar's? Yes. Drennell? Yes. Libke? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, with that, I'll invite a motion to adjourn the board meeting. Camp and move it. Second. Camp moves. Let the seconds. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Camp. Yes. Libke. Yes. Journal. Yes. Collars. Yes. Morrow. Yes, the uh, board of commissioners meeting is adjourned. I'm now going to call the drainage authority meeting to order. We have agenda additions to this uh, meeting. And uh, Ms. Copet, if you could uh, join us at this moment, we're going to just make sure we have the agenda the way we need to have it, if that's all right with you. Right now, we have the Jensen excavating contract on the agenda. Would you please identify the additional agenda items? I would like to add today the consideration of approval of the Zelly contract excavating contract and that's for the county ditch 86a project okay so we would have two contract approvals in a moment we'd have the jensen and the Selly. correct great thank you uh i would invite a motion to adopt the agenda as amended by adding the Selly contract for ditch 86a good moment Second. Wonderful. Uh, Commissioner Kemp uh, moves. Commissioner Drennell seconds. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Drennell? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Lipke? I'm going to abstain because I'm one of the signers on 86A. Morrow? Yes. The uh, motion passes uh, and uh, Commissioner Lipke abstains. Uh, we'll turn to consent agenda. I know of no changes to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Kemp would move the consent agenda. Second. Kemp moves. Uh, Drennell seconds. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Drennell? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Lipke? Commissioner Lipke? 
Is 86A in the consent agenda now? No, it's no. just the no. minutes of the March 9th, okay. 2021 yes. meeting. Okay. Then yes. Tomorrow. Yes, the uh, consent agenda is uh, a, a, approved. We're now going to turn to the first of the two contracts, the Jensen excavating contract for County Dist 77 Lateral 2. Uh, Ms. Kopit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if you recall, the Jensen excavating and trucking contract was awarded on February 23rd, um, 2021. This is for the County Dist 77 Lateral 2 improvement project. Um, just a little refresher, this is uh, the contract amount was $287,906.38. And this contract, um, the substantial completed, completed date is November 30th, 2021. So I am looking for a motion to approve the contract. This contract, I should add, it has also been reviewed by our county attorney. Wonderful, thank you. I'll move. Kemp will second. Lipke moves. Kemp seconds approval of the uh, Jensen excavating contract on CD 77 lateral two. Any discussion? Uh, Jackie, this, these were the same terms we talked about a couple of weeks ago then, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Seeing none, Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Lipke? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Jenna? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the uh, motion passes, the Jensen excavating contract is approved. We'll turn to the Selly contract, Ms. Copet. Thank you. So this is the same thing. This is on County Ditch 86A. This uh, bid was approved by the County Board just on March 9th, 2021. Contract has been prepared. Uh, the contract amount is $60,014.50. And the substantial completion date on this portion of the 86A project is September 30th, 2021. This contract has been reviewed by our county attorney. And I will be asking for a motion to approve this contract as well. Kemp would move approval of the contract. Drental will second. Thank you. Kemp moves. Drental seconds the motion to approve the uh, Selly contract for Ditch 86A. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Drental? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Lipke? Abstain for the same reasons as earlier. Tomorrow. Yes, the motion passes. Commissioner Lipke abstains. Uh, we have no other action items on this agenda. Let me just ask if there are any uh, department heads who have uh, additional information for the drainage authority. Seeing none, I'll invite a motion to adjourn the drainage authority meeting. Kemp would move adjournment. Second. Kemp moves. Lipke seconds. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Drenno? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the Drainage Authority meeting is approved. Everyone, thank you very much for your participation and your leadership today. Very grateful to all of you. Thank you, Terry.